if the Titanic sank somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, how do you think the news reached people in England and New York at that time? If the Titanic sank today, in what format would people receive or read the news? Good day everyone and welcome to another video. And for today's video, we will be talking about the evolution of traditional media to new media. First, let's talk about the prehistoric age or the pre-industrial age that is before 1700s. It is where people discovered fire, developed paper from plants, and forged weapons and tools with stone, bronze, copper, and iron. So in here we have different examples. First, we have the papyrus in Egypt. First papyrus was only used in Egypt, but by 1000 BC, people all over West Asia began buying papyrus from Egypt and using it since it was much more convenient than clay tablets, less breakable and not as heavy. So people made papyrus in small sheets and then glued to the sheets together to make big pieces. Next we have the cave paintings. In prehistoric art, the term cave paintings encompasses any parietal art which involves the application of color pigments on the walls, floors, or ceilings of ancient rock shelters. Next, we have the clay tablets in Mesopotamia. In the ancient Near East, clay tablets were used as a writing medium, especially for writing in cuneiform. Cuneiform characters were imprinted on a wet clay tablet with a stylus often made of reed, and a reed is a pen. So this is an example of a cuneiform alphabet. Next example we have the Acta Juna in Rome. So it is a Latin word and sometimes translated as daily public records. So these were daily Roman official notices and a sort of daily gazette. They are carved on stone or metal and presented in message boards in public places like the Forum of Rome. They were also called simply Acta History. And the first form of Acta appeared around 131 BC during the Roman Republic. Let's proceed to Dibao in China. The Chinese Dibao is the earliest and oldest newspaper in the world. Next, we have the Codex in the Mayan region. These are folding books written by the pre-Columbian Maya civilization in Maya hieroglyphic script or Mesoamerican bark cloth. The Maya developed in their Han paper around the 5th century, which is roughly the same time that the codex became predominant over the scroll in the Roman world. Let's proceed to the next phase which is the industrial age. This is where people use the power of steam develop machine tools, and establish iron production, and the manufacturing of various products, including the books through printing press. First, we have the telephone.
another we have the typewriter Next we have the London Gazette London, the London Gazette is one of the official journals of record of the British government and it is the most important among such official journals in the United Kingdom in which certain state statutory notices are required to be published. The London Gazette claims to be the oldest surviving English newspaper. Let's proceed with the printing press. A printing press is a device for applying pressure to an inked surface resting upon a print medium such as paper or a cloth. The printing press was invented by the Holy Roman Empire by the German Johannes Gutenberg around 1440, so based on the existing screw pressers. Up next we have the motion pictures. The history of film technology traces the development of film technology over the initial development of moving pictures at the end of the 19th century to the present time. Motion pictures were initially exhibited as a fairground novelty and developed into one of the most important tools of communication and entertainment in the 20th century. So major developments in motion picture technology have included the adoption of synchronized motion picture sound, color motion picture film, and the adoption of digital film technologies to replace the physical film stock at both ends of the production chain by, di by digital image, sensors, and projectors. Next we have Telegraph, and it was being developed in 1830s and 1840s by Samuel Morse. Telegraph revolutionized long-distance communication. It worked by transmitting electrical signals over a wire lead between stations. Let's proceed to the electronic age. This is where the invention of the transistor ushered in the electronic age. And people harnessed the power of tr transistor that led to the transistor radio, electronic circuits, and the early computers. In this age, long-distance communication became more efficient. One example is the transistor. And the transistor is ushered in electronic age and it led to the creation of other media tools. We also have the television. Next, we have the transistor radio. It is a small portable radio receiver that uses transistor-based circuitry. So following their development in 1954, made possible by the invention of the transistor in 1947, they became the most popular electronic communication device in history. Next, we have the personal computers. And an example of a personal computer is a floppy disk. A floppy disk is a removable magnetic storage medium. This is used for moving information between computers, laptops, or other devices. Some early digital cameras, electronic music instruments, and older computer game consoles use floppy disks. Another type of personal computer is the Apple One. It is a desktop computer released by the Apple Computer Company in 1970. Next, we have the Walkman. It is originally used for portable audio cassette players. Up next, we have the Information Age. At this age, the internet paved the way for faster communication and the creation of the social network. 
people advance the use of microelectronics with the invention of personal computers, mobile devices, and wearable technology. Moreover, voice, image, sound, and data are digitalized. We are now living in the information age. We have different examples, such as the Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer, or formerly Microsoft Internet Explorer and Windows Internet Explorer, commonly abbreviated as IE or MSIE. This was a series of graphical web browsers developed by Microsoft and included in the Microsoft Windows line of operating system of operating systems starting in 1995. For social networks, we have Friendster, Multiply, and Facebook. And Friendster was a social gaming site based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It was originally a social networking service website. Before Friendster was redesigned, the service allowed users to contact other members, maintain those contacts, and share online content and media with, with those contacts. The website was also used for dating and discovering new events. Also, users could share videos, photos, images, and comments with other members via profiles and networks. It is considered one of the original social networks. Next, we have the Multiply. Multiply was a social networking service with an emphasis on allowing users to share media such as photos, videos, and blog entries. And on February 4, 2004, Mark Zuckerberg launched the Facebook. This is the social networking service gradually expanded to the most universities in Canada and the USA. On August 2005, the company dropped the from its name and on September 26, 2006, Facebook was open to everyone for at least 13 years old with a valid email address. For microblogs, we have Twitter and Tumblr. Twitter is an American online news and social networking service on which users post and interact with messages known as tweets. Tweets were originally restricted to 140 characters, but on November 7, 2017, this limited was doubled to 280 for all languages except Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Another is Tumblr. It is used as a microblogging and social networking website founded by David Karp in 2007. It was owned by the Verizon Media. The service allows users to post multimedia and other content to a short-form blog. It is where users can follow other users' blogs and bloggers can also make their blogs private. For bloggers, many of the website's features are accessed from a dashboard interface. For video, we have YouTube and that was launched on 2005. For video chat, we have Skype and Google Hangouts. For search engines, we have Google and Yahoo. For affordable computers, we have laptops, netbooks, and tablets.